Hello and welcome to Kiwi Rider Podcast. My name's Ray here and great to have you along. And this week it is a Small Bike Stuff takeover. Uh, Callum and the team at Small Bike Stuff have done a fantastic interview with a gentleman that's pretty much responsible for turning the Honda Cub into the Honda Trail. I'm not going to ruin the story. I'm just going to roll the tape. Take it away, Callum and Small Bike Stuff. I ordered the first Hondas uh, from Japan. In fact, I think I got, I got the first Hondas that came into the U.S. And, of course, once Honda started building them, then all the other motorcycle companies copied Honda. And I looked at that cub and I said, this will do a better job than that. It was simple, really. Next thing to learn is to ride the Honda trail bike. This is hunting lesson number two. The Honda trail bike. Well, if you know the story, you'll know a few things already. The bike was derived from Honda's first Super Cup model to hit American shores. The model was created by an American based in Boise, Idaho, and Honda eventually realized its potential and incorporated the model into their production fleet. Now that man that created the Honda Trail Cup was Herb Yule. And as of the creation of this video, Herb is still kicking about in Washington and he's in his 10th decade. And in five years of small bike stuff, I've always made a point of connecting with anyone else globally that enjoyed small bikes. And to my surprise, one of those connections recently posted a photo of Herb Yule standing next to one of his bikes. A few messages later, and I was now in touch with Herb Yule myself. We shared a phone call in late 2022, and then I was lucky enough to get some USA-based friends on site to document Herb's incredible story. So here it is, from the man himself. Sit back and listen to the Honda Trail Cub origin story by Herb Yule. I'm Herb Yule, and we're at the Reiki Ranch in uh, Chehalis, Washington. Well, just outside of Chehalis, Washington, about 10 miles. I started off in Boise, Idaho. My wife at that time uh, got hit by a car when she was riding her motorcycle, and uh, we got about 800 bucks for for the accident, for the damage, and I fixed the motorcycle for a couple of hundred, and the other five I put into the motorcycle business. And that, that was the start of the motorcycle business, 500 bucks. Yeah, I opened my own dealership. Uh, I... Uh, uh, wanted off-road motorcycles because it was Boise, Idaho, and very few people ever rode a motorcycle on the highway except to get to the hills in Boise, Idaho at that time. And so uh, I wanted off-road motorcycles, and so I took on Mako, M-A-I-C-O. And that was, uh, and I they had enduro motorcycles at that time, uh, you yeah. I know years later, Yamaha thinks they invented the name, but uh, Mako Enduros were available in 1955, 56, so forth. And so that's what I took on. Herco, H-E-R-C-O, Herb's Company, Engineering. No, it was in uh, uh, Garden City, right, uh, part of Boise, but... Mm-hmm. I guess if you're looking north, it's to the left. <laughs> Simple as that. So I ordered in a motorcycle, and uh, I guess I sold a couple of them. And then the uh, importer, Nicholas Gray, that was the importer at that time out of Detroit, he came to see me, and he offered me uh, motorcycles on consignment. And so that got me in the business. So my total investment was 500 bucks. Well, you could ride from your house to the hills on a motorcycle without license plates. Nobody paid any attention. And uh, so that's what everybody did. And very, very seldom anybody ever rode a motorcycle on the road. Oh, there were a few road riders, but not many. But a lot of dirt riders because the foothills were right there. And so everybody went to the hills. And so... That uh, was my interest, too. I didn't care to ride on the road. You can drive on the road. You don't even have to ride on it. And there was lots of old logging roads and old mining roads because there was a lot of mining went on in that area. And so we explored all those old roads and rode in all kinds of places. I ordered the first Hondas uh, from Japan. In fact, I think I got, I got the first Hondas that came into the U.S., a guy down in San Diego by the name of Sailor Maine 
also ordered, but I think about the same time. But uh, and uh, we both went uh, into the motorcycle business, and they were actually off-road motorcycles. Uh, they put uh, in, they had a little. There was a little bitty article in uh, Cycle World, I think, at that time, that showed the, uh, had a picture of this motorcycle. Uh, and Honda out of Japan and everybody was wondering if the thing would be any good or if it would be junk or what it was and I said I, I looked good to me so I ordered a pair of them I got them in and sold them almost instantly and ordered more and they wouldn't sell me anymore because they was, weren't serious motorcycles those were built in their race shop and they didn't realize that that's what we wanted. And they didn't get the message for several years. They couldn't understand it because we wanted motorcycles for off-road use. So when they moved to Los Angeles and set up American Honda, I was the first American dealer to contact them. And that was when they were in an apartment house out on Sepulveda Boulevard, farther out than what they eventually had their store. And uh, they were trying to figure out how to set up a dealer, uh, a, a distributorship in America. They were up in this big apartment, in this apartment house. Well, the first bikes I got, I forget what the model was. It was, but it uh, it wasn't a series model, like I say. It was specials. And uh, then they came out with the CB72, and this, uh, I think it was. CB71, I think, 72, and uh, of course the C100, the Honda Cub, and that uh, was a little 50cc. And so as soon as they got set up on Sepulveda with American Honda uh, in their little building front, I went down to see them, and I went ahead and ordered some of the Cubs and some of the, uh, well, they had a, uh, a little 150 as well. So I ordered some of those 150s, a couple of them, and I ordered a couple of CB72s, and and then, and then, and two or three Cubs, and uh, of course when they came in at Boise, I credited all those things, and I looked at those Cubs and wondered how I was ever going to sell them at Boise, and that's when I started looking at them as uh, as what I could do to them to make them so that people would want them and I got to looking at them and every time I walked by them I looked at them a little more and I decided that they would make a way better trail bike than the tote goats and so forth that people were using at that time. And so I there was a guy in, in Boise that built sprockets, had a machine to make sprockets and so I ordered a sprocket to stick over the other one as an overlay and then I ordered knobby tires for them because that would be necessary. And that's what took long. It took several months for knobbies to come in for it. And uh, so then I tried it out in the hills and found out that it actually worked real good. So I started building them and ordering them in. And I guess I sold several hundred of them before Honda uh, noticed that I was selling way more Honda Cubs than all of their dealers in the greater Los Angeles area together. And these were city bikes where they should have sold there. But here I was selling them out in a little town in Idaho. And so uh, Jack McCormick from American Honda called and wondered what I was doing to sell all those little tubs. Because they, they weren't moving. And uh, I told him to make them into trail bikes. And so he said, send me one of them so I can see what you're doing. So I sent it to him, and he looked it over, and they rode it around and played with it and sent it on to Japan and told Japan that they wanted the exact same thing as a separate mo model, and that was the start of the, the Honda trail bike. And, of course, once Honda started building them, then all the other motorcycle companies copied Honda, and there was a trail bike, Yamaha and Kawasaki, and everybody had a little trail bike of some kind. But that started the ATV motorcycle business. Oh, I was just selling motorcycles. I didn't... It was just the way things were, you know. I was so, just selling lots of motorcycles. 
it didn't it didn't bother you that they took your designs and made their own bike? No, really, because I didn't. It didn't even occur to me that that was a that was a. It didn't occur to me that that was a big deal. But that actually started the motorcycle derived ATV. And that's made the motorcycle companies more money than anything else that's ever been done to motorcycles. In fact, that, that's where all, then the three wheelers came, and that was direct from that, and then four wheelers, and now side by sides. In fact, if it wasn't for that, side by sides would probably say Chevy, Ford, and Ram instead of Honda, Kawasaki, and Yamaha, you know. So that really started the off-road motorcycle business. You know, to, to get to a little lake or something up in the mountains required a horse or a hell of a long walk. And so they were building little scooters with uh, Briggs and Stratton engines on them with no suspension on either end so that they could go up into those places and they called those things tote goats. In fact, that became a brand. The company started up and built those little things. They had a piece of plywood on there with a, a little padding on it and a covering for a seat and so forth. And I looked at that cub and I said, this will do a better job than that. It was simple, really. It was really simple. It was just looking at it and seeing another use for this piece of equipment that nobody was covering. Wasn't anybody covering a proper, a proper trail bike. So I built a proper trail bike just by modifying that cub, and that's all that was. And Honda never really understood the trail bike. They still don't. And you can tell it by the what, what, what they've done. In the first place, they didn't realize that the seat height of the cub had a lot to do with its appeal. And so the, the first thing they did when they designed their own, after copying mine, was to raise the seat height about three or four inches. So they never understood it. They did finally understand that somebody told them that they needed a high and low range gearbox. And they did that. But they dropped it. That was the only thing that they contributed to the trail bike that really improved it, was a high low range gearbox. This new one doesn't have it. So the new one is not a good road bike or a good trail bike, neither one. What it is is an off-road fun bike. That's all it is. But if they'd have left the high low range gearbox in it, it would be a really good trail bike. Well, I made a big, bigger sprocket because it needed to have a lower range gearing. So I made a big sprocket that slipped on over the original. And that made it a high low range gearing so that it could be used in the trail. And that's the way we sold them. And if they wanted to use them on the road, they simply slip, slip that sprocket off and put the chain down on the original sprocket and away could it go. Uh, that, was, that was the main thing. And then, of course, I took their, uh, they had leg shield on it and all that. Took that off, of course. Uh, took their bigger muffler off and put on a small pipe, again, for clearance and so forth. And that's really, and moved the shock the shock had to be moved at the top of the shock to give room for the sprocket to clear. And I simply did that. Moved the shock, moved the bottom of the shock out to the outside of the swing arm instead of the inside. And that gave clearance. And really, that's all I had to do. And added the knobby tires. Huh? And added the knobby tires. I added the knobby tires, yeah. They already had the, the trail bike was already in that design. They just didn't know it. And what kind of feedback were you getting from your customers? The best you can. <laughs> they were loving it, and they were friend, their friends were coming in and buying them too. So that's the best feedback you can get. Thank you so much, Cullum and Small Bike Stuff, for letting us use the audio from that video, which is live on the Small Bike Stuff YouTube channel. Head to YouTube, search out Small Bike Stuff, and check it out. A very, very well produced uh, mini documentary. So thank you very much, and check out Small Bike Stuff on any platform that you listen to or follow us on. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok under the handle Kiwi Rider Podcast, and uh, we'd love for you to join us. Uh, the rest of my stuff goes up at motoNZ.com and on YouTube. Search out Moto NZ. My name is Ray Heron. Thank you so much for listening. If you liked this, 
please hit that subscribe button. Give us some feedback. You can chuck a comment on this episode or you can give us a review on Apple Podcasts. Or you can email us, podcast at kiwirider.co.nz. Check out the latest Kiwi Rider magazine. Two magazines out absolutely free twice a month. Uh, or two magazines out absolutely free every month, I should say. And um, you can check them out at kiwirider.co.nz. Otherwise, get the rubber side down, throttle on, and we'll catch you in seven days' time. Music.